नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन सेवन ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग गाइडलाइंस फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन इफ वी हैव अ क्विक रिव्यू ऑफ व्हाट वी हैव कवर्ड टिल टुडे वी हैव कवर्ड द बेसिक एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस द एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस एंड वी हैव ट्राइड टू सी दैट व्हाट आर द प्रोसेस कैपेबिलिटीज ऑफ द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस we tried to see the application areas of the manufacturing processes although we have not gone into the details of the manufacturing processes the manufacturing mechanics of the manufacturing processes or the parameters governing a particular manufacturing process but we have tried to understand from the application point of view that which process can be used under what type of circumstances under what type of conditions and in that we have seen that casting can be used for a very specific application machining can be used for a specific application and then we have listed a criteria which will help us to decide that which manufacturing process can be used for which type of application in the second week of our discussion we started the discussion with introduction to the engineering materials in which we have seen what are the various types of engineering materials that we use if we see all around us so many types of engineering materials are there there are polymers there are plastics polymers or plastics one on the same thing we have metals we have wood we have other types of materials like ceramics so we have tried to classify the engineering materials into different classes or different families or different groups today our target is to see that what are the properties of the engineering materials which a product designer must know every product designer must have a basic idea about the materials otherwise how the designer will be able to specify that this particular material can be used for this specific application again i am taking the example of a chair in chair if you see a chair can be made with metal it can be made with wood it can be made with plastic now there we have different types of chairs now depending upon the specific application the product designer has to find out has to suggest that which material must be used for this particular type of a chair so the properties of the engineering materials must be known to the product designer prior to finishing or prior to finalizing his or her product design so we will today try to revise what are the various me mechanical physical chemical properties as well as the thermal properties which are important from the product design point of view so whenever we are designing a product we must have a look at these properties from the material suggestion point of view or from the material choice point of view because whenever we finalize a product we have to see that which material is going to be used for designing or for for after designing for fabrication of this product one example that i usually take in the class is the example of a toothbrush in toothbrush we see what are the basic requirements it must be light in weight it must be cost effective it must not be too costly then the bristles have to be they have to be light on the gums or they have to be soft on the gums or they have to be harsh on the gums most of the time we see bleeding from the gums if you brush your teeth too vigorously so we have to ensure that the material of the bristles must be soft on our gums so we cannot use a metallic bristles in case of brushing of our teeth whereas we can use the metallic bristles for some other application where we want to do hard rubbing on any surface or we want to do cleaning of some very hard surface there we may go for metallic bristles but in case of toothbrush we will definitely suggest soft bristles only and then the material that we select must be soft on our on our gums so this is just one example of selection of a material for a specific product and how we will be able to suggest the materials for products if we have complete information about the materials the type of materials available as well as the properties of the materials and then we must also know that how to select the materials what can be the selection criteria based on which we can select the material for a specific application and that is the objective or the aim or we can say the goal of this particular discussion that we are having during this week that is the second week of our course on manufacturing guidelines for 
product design. So, let us start our discussion with the properties of materials. Now, what are the properties of materials? You can see a material property is the identity of the material. So, identity, it will identify the material. Now, how it will be identified? It will be identified based on the physical, based on the chemical as well as based on the thermal and the mechanical properties of the material. So, the material property is the identity of the material which describes its state, physical and chemical state and the behavior under different conditions. So, the property basically will define the behavior of a material under different conditions, how it is going to behave when it is subjected to different types of conditions. For example, if we have a surface and we rub on the surface, we will try to see that what is one of the properties that may come to our mind, maybe the hardness of the material. If it is hard, it will wear out less. If it is soft, it will wear out quickly. So, then we have to see that how the material will behave under different types of conditions. So, that is going to and that will be dictated by the various properties of the material. So, steel may have a different wear resistant properties whereas, plastics may have a different wear resistant properties. And from application point of view, this example if we can talk about the floor. So, so many people are walking on the floor. So, we must know that how this flooring is going to behave when maybe hundreds of people are going to walk on this floor. It must not wear out, it must not decolor, it must not be chipping of material may not take place from the floor. So, how we will decide that which material must be selected for our floor? It must be tiles, it must be a carpet or what type of flooring we must provide when so many number of people or uh, x number of people are going to walk on this floor on daily basis, on weekly basis and on yearly basis. So, that selection of material will depend upon the properties of the material that yes, this material possesses these specific properties and therefore, it can be used for this specific application for making the floor. So, that is why the importance of material properties cannot be ignored from the product design point of view and every product designer must have little information or we can say a basic information about the material properties and the focus primarily has to be on these four properties that we have listed here. So, first one can be the physical properties, the chemical properties, the thermal properties and the mechanical properties. So, we will see each one of these in today's session. Now, what are the physical properties? The physical properties are maybe it is mentioned here the melting point, the boiling point of the material we must know and the phase change may be sublimation characteristics of the material must be known to us, how it will change from solid to liquid at what temperature that transformation will change take place from liquid to gas at what temperature this is going to take place, what is the boiling point of the material, what is the freezing point of the material, what is the melting point of the material. All these properties must be known to the product designer when he or she is designing the product. So, what are the physical properties? Now, physical properties describe the state of material. So, these describe the state of material which is observable or measurable. So, these are the two key characteristics observable and measurable. Some of the commonly used physical properties are we can go one by one. So, we have to see that the properties which we call as the physical properties are observable as well as measurable. So, we can see color is one property represents the reflective properties of a substance. So, we can easily grade the material based on the 
color and if you see some of the advertisements they show the different colors but before this is the color after this is the color so that is measurable that before the treatment this is the color after the treatment this is the color so that is one physical property then density amount of mass contained by unit volume of material so this is another physical property which we must know and this is very very important when we design the product when we are designing the product and we want it to be very very light in weight so we have to understand that which material can provide us this light weight product so we will definitely compare the densities of the different materials and try to see that wherever it is possible for us to save some weight we will select the material which will have density accordingly similarly the melting point of the material the melting point is a temperate temperature at which the material changes its state from solid to liquid so that melting point if you remember we have seen in the first session when we were discussing the manufacturing processes we have seen one graph on y axis we had the melting temperature if you remember for the various manufacturing processes we have seen this type of graph on y axis we had the melting temperature or the melting point and on x axis we had the volume of production and then we have uh, put different processes there so melting point is an important care parameter from the material selection point of view and subsequently it will affect that which process can be used for making the product so if we are selecting a material which is having a very high melting point we may not be able to make it by casting process so therefore we may have to suggest a different process where the melting point is not going to play an important role so but the melting point high material that we are selecting for a product may have certain special characteristics thereby we are suggesting that high melting point material must be used for this specific application and if we are suggesting a material for a particular application where the melting point is low we will suggest since the melting point is low we can use casting process for making this product because easily the furnace will be able to convert the raw material from solid to liquid form so therefore this knowledge of these properties is going to be helpful for for the product designer for appropriate selection of the material for the product being designed similarly the boiling point also is very very important so boiling point is the temperature at which material changes its state from liquid to gas as we have seen in the previous slide so when we are talking about the materials uh, properties of the materials we have four broad categories the first one are the physical properties then we will go to the chemical properties and on your screen you can see this is the property of oxidation solubility corrosion permeability combustibility so these are just uh, we can say representative chemical properties there can be a extended list of chemical properties which must be taken into account before finalizing a material for a particular product and these are a representative list only so we have seen suppose we have to understand we want to mix two different uh, solvents together for a particular application we must know the property of solubility of each one of them similarly if we are suggesting a material which has to be outdoor or it has to be under water for all of its life or throughout its life it is a underwater installation we have to be very very sure about the corrosion properties sometimes we try to improve the corrosion behavior of any substrate by putting lot of coatings on the substrate so the coating improves the corrosion behavior of the material it reduces the corrosion rate so this type of coatings can be given on the substrate to avoid the corrosion or the problem caused by corrosion so this must be known when we are suggesting a material which has to be constantly in contact with water or constantly in contact with some chemical reagents we need to understand that how it the life of the product will be affected whether the corrosion will take place or not or what is the corrosive behavior of this material and therefore we need to understand these properties from the 
product design point of view because many times from the suppose we make a product the product is put into service and then during the service we have to suggest that this has to be maintained this has to be serviced after so many hours or so many weeks or so many months or so many years so regular maintenance has also to be suggested many times we have maintenance in terms of you have to paint the surface every year or every 18 months so why that painting is required because sometimes the corrosion may start at the surface of the material so for that particular material when we are suggesting it for a particular product or a structure or a bridge we must know that how it is going to behave under the various service conditions and therefore we must know the corrosion behavior each for each properties i am taking one example in the last i have taken example for physical properties from for the melting point i have tried to explain the importance of melting point in chemical properties i am trying to explain the importance of corrosion similarly the combustibility solubility oxidation permeability all these properties we can take example of each one of these and try to understand that what is their importance from the product design point of view so from the combustibility we can say that wherever we are suggesting polymers so we have to have clear idea about the flame retardant behavior of these materials and if we know that there are chances of fire we must add fire retardant reagents or fire retardant additives into our polymer products therefore we must know that what is the combustibility or flame retardant behavior of our or the flammability behavior of our polymers that we are suggesting for particular application so that has to be taken into account so similarly let us now have a basic idea of the various uh, properties we are not going to discuss each and every property in detail because this is a very very exhaustive topic and even on materials as well as metallurgy as well as materials engineering there are number of other courses which focus in detail only on the aspects various aspects of materials and their application so our focus is primarily uh, limited to the understanding of the basic idea about the materials from the product design point of view so our focus is on designing a product and what parameters we must keep in mind while we are finalizing the process as well as we are finalizing the material for our product so the chemical properties are the measure of reactivity very very important because in corrosion we see how the material is going to react to the environment during the service period so that is the measure of reactivity of a material in the presence of another substance so in my example if you remember the another substance i have taken was water under underwater application i have taken for corrosion or environment which imposes change in the material composition so the microstructural changes may also take place when the material is exposed to different types of environment or it comes in contact with different substances so that is the measure of its reactivity so what is corrosion rate corrosion rate is measured in terms of corrosion penetration for given period of time at specified surrounding conditions so at specified conditions when the product is used how it is going to uh, re react to the penetration or the uh, penetration for a given period of time so for a given period of time maybe 6 months maybe 1 year how much corrosion penetration has gone into the material that is the indication or the measurable quantity we call as the corrosion rate similarly the oxidation rate oxidation rate is measured in terms of amount of material consumed forming oxide or amount of oxide scale formed for a given period of time we can say the amount of oxide scale formed for a given period of time at specified surrounding temperature so we can calculate the oxidation rate we can calculate the corrosion rate for a material and we may not be interested in calculating as a product designer but we may look for the oxidation rate 
it may be available for the material that we are suggesting. So, there are two different thoughts that are available or that we must keep in mind. The, if we are suggesting a completely new material for a particular application, we must find out, we must do research on finding out the oxidation rate or the corrosion rate for that material and then specify that what is the corrosion rate. If it is beyond a particular value, we must suggest the maintenance procedures, the service procedures for that material or the product during its service life. But if we are using a standard material which is in use for the last 50, 60, 70 years, very easily we can get the data related to the oxidation rate, related to the corrosion rate of that material. So, if the material is a standard material, we can very easily get this data. If we are proposing a new material, we must try to do research and find out these properties before suggesting the use of this material for a particular application. For example, the underwater installations. If we are use, suggesting a standard steel, we must look for its corrosion rate and oxidation rate from the standard handbooks. But if we are suggesting a use of a composite material for underwater application, we must try to find out that how it will corrode or how the fiber reinforced plastic or a composite material will react to the water which may be under freezing conditions. So, how that reaction will take place and how the material will behave under those specific application area or under those specific environmental conditions that has to be found out before suggesting a particular material for the underwater installations. This is just one example that I have taken. Now, the other important properties are the mechanical properties. So, we can see with the help of example, this is the behavior under the tensile load, the behavior under the compressive load, the behavior under the shear load the type of loading and the torsional loading. So, this is the behavior of a material under applied loads that how the material is going to behave. One of the most important applications that we can see here is the bullet proof applications or the bullet proof materials. Suppose we are making a bullet proof helmet or we are making a bullet proof jacket. So, there has to be this investigation that when a projectile or a bullet is coming and hitting the material, how the material will behave. It must have good impact resistance. So, that impact resistance is also a mechanical property. Suppose the material is getting stretched, maybe we can say the mechanical properties of the rods that we use for RCC structure are another example where we must know that what is the tensile strength, what is the compressive strength of the material. There can be number of examples where the mechanical properties play a very, very important role, a very, very integral role during the product design process. We must know that what type of loads the material can bear before suggesting that material for a specific application. And moreover, whenever we are making structures or for structural analysis, different type of material is being used. We need to do the standard tests to find out the properties of that material, so that the material passes or surpasses or is overcomes or maybe it has better properties than the specific requirement. So, we have to always keep in mind the factor of safety also while proposing the use of different types of material for a specific application. So, let us see the mechanical properties. I have tried to explain with the help of an example. Now, let us see what is given in the slide. So, the mechanical properties describe the behavior of material in terms of deformation and resistance to deformation under specific mechanical loading. So, when the material is subjected to different type of mechanical loads, how it is going to behave that is going to define the mechanical behavior of the material. These properties are significant as they describe the load bearing capacity of the product. So, we need to understand that these properties are important because they define the load bearing capacity of a product. Now, let us take example of this dice. This is a wooden dice and there is a console panel here. This has a dead weight. So, this dice has to have the mechanical property to, to take the load of this dice. Sometimes I may be standing like this. 
so i am also putting some weight on the dais so this dais must have the mechanical property to take that type of load that is being exerted on it plus a factor of safety i may not be the most heaviest person who is applying the load here there may be other people who may exert more load and this console may be changed by another display which may be heavier than this so we have to see that this product must have the load bearing capacity for which it has been designed and if suppose we keep keep a material which is having much more loading or much more weight so this may also fail under that type of load so we have to see the load bearing capacity of the material before proposing its use for specific applications now these are the various mechanical properties there can be other properties also some of these properties we can see here this is strength hardness toughness stiffness elasticity plasticity ductility brittle behavior malleability so we have different types of mechanical properties which define the mechanical behavior of an engineering material so we cannot go into the detail of each one of these so let us quickly see the three important definitions strength is the property that enables an engineering material to resist deformation under load it is also defined as the ability of the material to withstand an applied load without failure hardness is the mechanical property of an engineering material and refers to the resistance of a material against abrasion scratching and indentation so hardness is related to resistance to abrasion scratching and indentation strength is related to ability of a material to withstand an applied load without failure toughness is the mechanical property that provides a measure of a material to withstand shock so toughness is related to shock absorption or withstanding the shock and extent of plastic deformation in the event of rupture so how much plastic deformation can take place before the final failure so we are just giving you a hint about these three properties but the list is very very exhaustive a material may be defined or characterized for its mechanical behavior using large number of mechanical properties now the finally we can go for the fourth category of properties which are the thermal properties so heat therm high thermal conductivity example is given so it has high thermal con conductivity low thermal conductivity example is given here so we can see from the picture also when it is getting heated how the heat is getting conducted in the material here less conduction because of the low thermal conductivity so what are the thermal properties let us see thermal properties of an engineering material primarily refer to the characteristic behavior of the material behavior of the material under thermal load so when thermally you are applying you are giving heat to the material how it is going to behave that is known as the thermal characteristics or behavior of the material so thermal conductivity is a measure of a, a ability of material to conduct heat so measure of the ability now what is the ability of the material to conduct heat that is going to define the thermal conductivity the specific heat refers to the measure of energy that is required to change the temperature for a unit mass so we can have different parameters so when you are going to design a particular product and then you want to understand that how it will behave when subjected to heat you need to understand few parameters you need to understand important parameter that is thermal conductivity you need to understand what is the specific heat of the material and these quantities for the material will be available in the tabular form so we need not worry that how we will get to know that what is the specific heat of the material how we will get an idea that what is the thermal conductivity of the material so this type of data is already available but as a product designer i must know that this data is available i must look at this data while before suggesting a material for a specific product application so what is specific heat it refers to the measure of energy that is required to change the temperature of a unit 
mass so that therefore for a specific product where we want to change the temperature of a unit mass we must know what is the specific heat for a material or of the material so thermal diffusivity another property thermal property refers to the ratio of thermal conductivity and heat capacity of a material and provides a measure of the rate of heat conduction so you have thermal diffusivity specific heat thermal conductivity then there can be other properties which define the thermal behavior of any engineering material and as a product designer i must look into these uh, characteristics or properties which define the thermal behavior Ve only in those cases where the product is going to be subjected to heating conditions or maybe high heating conditions now this is the last slide for today physical and mechanical properties of engineering material source is also given physical and physical and mechanical properties of engineering materials by professor a k day from iit bombay this is uh, taken from the source so we can see what are the different types of materials in this direction iron copper aluminum steel aluminum 6061 titanium 6al4v so different types of metals and alloys are there and then the properties are given the properties are density if we if you remember today only we have taken an example density falls under our physical properties then the melting temperature is given boiling temperature is given young's modulus which is a mechanical property shear modulus which is a mechanical property bulk modulus which is a mechanical property poisson's ratio which is a mechanical property so a combination of physical and mechanical properties are given in this table for various engineering materials and finally the applications are given so you can see that all the thermal properties are not mentioned here but copper is used for making heat exchangers why why it is used it is used because of its good thermal properties what are the thermal properties that we can look for we can look for thermal conductivity we can look for specific heat we can look for thermal diffusivity so when we are suggesting an application for heat or for where the temperature is important we must look for the thermal properties of the engineering materials let us take one more example maybe aircraft fittings we are taking for this aa6061 material so we can see that the mechanical properties what is the poisson's ratio what is the density and depending upon that we will propose now in aircraft what is required in aircraft the lightweight material is required and for lightweight if you remember today we have taken an example of density so then we can focus on density and see that which material is going to give us less weight and for aircraft fitting we are going to use aluminum aa6061 why because it is giving us less weight as compared to the other engineering materials so with this i think we have been able to Uh, correlate the properties with their applications and as a product designer we must know that when we are suggesting a particular material for specific applications like heat exchanger or aircraft fittings we must look at the various properties of the various engineering materials and then select our material in the most judicious manner so with this we conclude the today's session we will start our discussion in the next session related to the engineering materials thank you